31 planes of existence. That means in the whole universe, all those living beings are categorized or divided into 31 groups. Here in this world or in this planet, we can see many of them. Human beings, animals, and although we cannot see some sort of invisible living beings such as a spirit, ghost, or devil, also exist in this world. There is no separate world for ghosts or devils or spirits. They do exist everywhere. Now let us start from the very beginning. A start from here, from bottom up to the top. Hell is regarded as most miserable, very unfortunate, a state where living beings suffer throughout their life. Sufferings exist everywhere. As human beings also we suffer. But our suffering is not like sufferings in hell, because we have interval. We suffer, again we enjoy. We cry, again we laugh, again we suffer. Now this is our way of life. But in certain places, from their birth up to the last breath, for a long period, no happiness, no pleasure, no laughing, but physically and mentally most miserable and suffering, no interval. From birth up to the death, not even one minute interval to take rest. Now that is called hell. Now this is the nature of hell. But hell is not located under this earth or under the great ocean or anywhere. It's very clearly Buddha has mentioned this. We should not think hell is a particular place located under this earth or under the great ocean. And not only one place where there are sufferings from their birth up to the last breath. Uh, there you can find hell. As human beings also we suffer in hell. As animals also they suffer in hell. As spirit or ghosts or devils also they suffer in hell. But they have interval. Some have no interval. All the other religions talk about hell. But their concept or their belief about hell is different. To them, hell is eternal, permanent or everlasting. Buddhism says there is no such place, there is no such life that will exist forever without change. Again, other religions say hell is created by God or devil. Buddhism says Hell is not created by anybody. 
where there is suffering, hell is there. Therefore, hell is not created by the Buddha or devil or God or any other living being. Then, the duration, the period that they have to suffer depends on the degrees of bad karma. Some people create very bad karma, very cruel, very wicked, and by creating enormous suffering. Then their karma is very grave, very deep, very heavy. Then the suffering period also becomes very long. Either as human beings or animals or devils or ghosts or any other forms of living beings. Long period. And some people suffer only for a short period. That means their bad karma is not very heavy. When that bad karma is over, they get the chance to get rid of that unfortunate state. Therefore it is not eternal or permanent. There are various forms various states where these living beings suffer, either physically or mentally. Some people suffer only mentally. Some people suffer physically. Of course, physical body cannot experience pain. Mind experience the pain through the body. This we can understand when doctors give anesthetic injection. The mind cannot experience the pain so that they can cut here and there and no feel. The mind must be related to physical body. Then the pains and pleasure both we can experience. If we separate the mind from the body, no feeling, no sensation. So, now the first unfortunate state of existence is hell. Now you have learned the meaning of hell. What is hell? Where there is suffering, hell is there. That's all. Otherwise it is not a separate or ready-made place under this earth. Then we come to animal life, animal kingdom. I don't know why people use the word kingdom for that. They never say human kingdom. Only animals enjoy that. <laughs> Very respectable word, animal kingdom. Animals are very unfortunate. Then you can say Certain dogs and cats enjoy their life better than human beings. They get nice food and comfortable uh, bed to sleep and medicines and look after. They have some servants also to look after them. Not in that sense. Why they are unfortunate? Uh, then you have to compare human life with animal life. Then you can understand that animal life is very unfortunate, whether they get good food or comfortable life or not. Right? They do not know anything about their life. They are in the dark. They do not know how to mold. their next line. Animals do not know how to 
prepare for the next life. As human beings, we know, because we can understand that there will be another life hereafter or after our death. Therefore, we can prepare for the next life. Animals have no such idea. Therefore, their life is in the dark. That is why we say they are unfortunate. Again, rebirth takes place as animals because of certain bad karma that they have committed. Some human beings behave, live like animals. They have only human body, human figure, but their way of thinking, their way of life, sometimes worse than animals. More wicked, more cruel, more dangerous than animals. After they are dead, rebirth takes place as animals. Now that is the bad event. Now what is the difference between humans and animals? Ahara nidra bhaya maithunancha kamani metat asupit nara. This beautiful saying in Sanskrit language explains the difference between humans and animals. Eating, sleeping, sex and self-protection. These four things you can find in every living being. Eating, sleeping, sex and fight, self-defense, to protect their life. If human beings also live only eating, sleeping, experiencing sex and fighting for their protection, then what is the difference between animals and humans? Is there any difference? And then how can we say we are superior or we are higher. There must be something. But we are very cunning. Animals are not that bad. But there is something that we cannot find in animals. Dharmo hitesa adhiko visesa. We have something. Extraordinary thing. What is that? Dharma. This dharma you cannot find in animals. What is that? Dharma means noble life. Noble means respectable life. Respectable means harmless life. Harmless means by maintaining, cultivating certain good qualities, virtues, they are known as humane qualities. As human beings, we develop humane qualities. To respect our human dignity, by giving due credit to our human intelligence. And this intelligence you cannot find in animals. They are not intelligent. They have a point, but very, very limited. For their survival, for their protection, or for their enjoyment, they can extend their mind only for them. But as human beings, we have an intelligence we can extend this intention throughout the whole universe. It is very dark. It is very powerful. If we develop it, this intelligence. 
तो फर्स्ट टाइम ह्यूमन बीइंग्स आर द ओनली लिविंग बीइंग्स हु हैव डिस्कवर्ड अ रिलीज रिलीजन वाज नॉट गिवन बाय गॉड डिस्कवर्ड बाय ह्यूमन बीइंग other living beings have no relatives ah that is called dharma this dharma help us support us to continue our way of life without suffering without becoming unfortunate living beings again without becoming animals without becoming devils or ghosts or spirit without becoming unfortunate human beings you know there are so many unfortunate human beings in this world some are mad mentally retarded blind Death, dumb, crippled, or stupid, they are unfortunate human beings. Why they have to suffer like this? Why rebirth has taken place like this? Because they did not follow the Dhamma. They did not lead a religious life. Just. live sometimes worse than animal as i mentioned but the human mind is powered religion to guide mankind to lead a respectable life by allowing others also to enjoy their life without disturbing me uh, that is religious behavior so when we allow others also to enjoy their life then we reduce our jealousy our anger our hatred our ill will we reduce then we become very noble very respectable but how many human beings are there who can do it so now you realize the difference between animals and humans as human beings we can prepare our next life to be better than this existing life to be more intelligent to be more comfortable and peaceful happy prosperous life if we lead a religious way of life if we follow the dham that is why a buddha is important for us to tell us to guide us how to make use of this life otherwise we do not know what to do with this life we cannot understand we think the purpose of our life is enjoyment and the same enjoyment create enormous suffering slate worries disappointment unsatisfactoriness through the enjoyment therefore enjoyment is not the main purpose of our life then what is the main purpose complete liberation complete freedom complete bliss or peace now we have no peace we have no bliss we have no freedom we have no salvation every day we grumble we accuse we blame we complain because we have no satisfaction we have no freedom we cannot satisfy with this life 
That is why we always grumble and grumble and accuse and blame others. Then where is happening? But religion teaches how to tolerate certain things, how to face certain things, how to overcome certain things, and how to stop certain things. By using our human intelligence, we can do that. But many other living beings have no such opportunity. They have to face. They become victims very easily. But as human beings, we try to escape from certain things by using our intelligence. So, animal life is miserable, unfortunate, and nobody knows the fate of their life after their death. But continuity of life process remains. Then the third one, Preta. Preta means a spirit world, an invisible. They do exist here in this world. There is no separate world for them. Of course, you believe that your good friends sleep for one year and as a particular day they get up and come out. And you prepare some something for them during that period. You call them hungry ghost. They go down and sleep for one year. There's a particular day for them to come out. They are Chinese ghost. Chinese ghosts are very obedient. Not like other ghosts. <laughs> because other ghosts always come and disturb us. But the Chinese coast, only once a year they come out. <laughs> See how nice they are. <laughs> and sometimes you give only one chicken leg. <laughs> they satisfy and go back and sleep again. <laughs> Very nicely you, you, you interview them. Anyway, these ghosts are spirit exist. We cannot deny, we cannot say there are no such living beings. Why they are invisible? Why we cannot see them? Do you know the reason? The formations of this life, this body, take place due to the combinations of elements and energies, mental energies. Three things there. Mental energy, cosmic energy and element. In our case, humans or animals, more elements like solidity or fluidity or heat or wind, these are the four elements. Therefore, we can see the formation, the vision. But a spirit and ghost, they have more mental energy, more cosmic energy, and lesser degree of element. Uh, that is why we cannot see. When we develop our psychic power or attain Arahanta or the Buddha, then through their wisdom we can see this ghost or spirit or devil. Therefore we cannot say they never exist, they do exist. And they are very jealous, very cruel and also very miserable. Because of their problems, their trouble, their suffering, 
they disturb others. Why do they disturb? Because of jealousy, anger, and intolerant mental attitude. Not like human beings or animals. They always disturb others. Now let us take a snake, cobra, poisonous snake. Any time they are ready to attack, that is their way of life. If you touch a little bit, this is the nature of so these snakes are very very cruel by nature their duty is to attack that's all so if the snakes are like this what about these devils and ghosts uh, they are also very angry very cruel very wicked and very jealous Disturbing others is their hobby. Of course, there are human beings also. By disturbing others, they enjoy. Some people behave worse than cruel animals. Yesterday, or day before yesterday, the state times I have seen in America, a very rich contractor who has killed 33 young boys by torturing them secretly. Can you imagine? He endured by killing them. Can we regard them as human beings? That is why I told you, human body, but the mind is not human. Very uncultured, very cruel, very wicked, mentally. So, how to escape? Now, this is very important. How to escape from devils, ghosts, and spirit? By praying and worshipping to them? No. Simply by worshipping or offering certain things, you cannot escape. If not, Simply worshipping and praying to Buddha or God? No. Not yet. Now this is very important. Because all are scared of devils and ghosts and spirits. But they do not know how to escape. When our minds Pure. Ghosts and devils and spirit become powerless to attack. If we have more anger, more jealousy, more grudge, more ill will, more immoral attitude, uh, then they get the chance to attack us. Take for instance, you are very kind. You never disturb others. You are very honest. You never block others. Never tell a lie. And you always extend your sympathy towards others, assist and support. You never hurt others, either by scolding or accusing or beating. You never hurt others because of your kindness. Such kind-hearted, compassionate people will be free from their attack because they never, devil, so ghost, never attack. Never, they, they cannot do that. Not only devils and ghosts, even fierce animals also never disturb me. There are certain monks and some people 
who meditate in the jungle, where there are fierce animals like lions or tigers or pythons, but they do radiate their kindness and compassion metta every day. And those animals also never come and disturb because the environment around that area is completely different. They smell it, they feel it. That is the power of mental energy that we radiated with kindness and compassion. Uh, that is why I told you, this dharma, this religious way of life, always protect us and guide us. Dhammo have rakhati dhammachari, the beautiful sayings in Buddhism. If we live by following certain religious principles, but these religious principles, this dharma, always protect us. We get the chance to avoid or escape certain misfortune, accident and sudden death or injuries and disturbances. The dharma always protects us. That is why we have to learn by thinking, by knowing, through our understanding, how to make use of this life. So, there are different groups of devils and ghosts and a spirit. Those who have created very bad, very wicked, very cruel deeds, Because of their hatred, their anger, their jealousy, after their death, a rebirth takes place as either ghost or devils or spirit. Then those who are very stingy never think of others. They earn, they enjoy, Never give you a single cent for the benefit of others. Greedy, stingy, and they never create any good karma. Just enjoy their life, thinking this is the purpose of life. So what will happen? After they are dead, they never get the chance to be born as human beings because they have not accumulated enough good karma to be born as human beings. They abuse human life without using their intelligence. They enjoy their life, worldly way. But we can enjoy our life in religious way. This enjoyment we can continue to our next life. The happiness that we gain through religion by helping, supporting, assisting others, we enjoy while we are here in this world and after our death, when rebirth takes place in the next life also, we enjoy our life. Idha Nandati Vecha Nandati, the Buddha said. Idha Nandati, here they enjoy their life. Vajjanandati, hereafter, after they are dead, also they enjoy their life because of their happiness that they gain by doing meritorious deeds, religious work, helping others. And this is the way how to make use of the life. Then some others who develop their cruelty and meeting anger, all the while, day and night, boiling and boiling and boiling with anger and hatred and cruelty and enmity. They, they have so many enemies. If they died, 
with those evil thoughts, hatred, anger, jealousy and enmity, by hating some people as his enemies, they never get the chance to be born as evil beings again. People cannot understand how dangerous this method is. That is why some understanding people, before they are dead, they apologize. They approach their enemies. If I have done something wrong, please forgive me. Many people do that before they are dead. Because they know this will disturb their next life. If they die with that enmity or with that anger. So it is very dangerous. So after they are dead, what will happen? They also become some of those devils or ghosts or spirits because of that thing. And some others, <coughs> by leading very unhealthy, meaningless, immoral, harmful, dangerous life, by encouraging others also to do the same thing. After they are dead, it is difficult for them to be born as human beings. Or they also become either spirit or ghost or devil. For a long period they do exist, not like human beings or animals. Their lifespan is higher than humans and animals. Their lives is unfortunate, full of suffering, and again after they are dead, they also die. After they are dead, sometimes they become worse than they will so forth, because throughout their life they disturb others. Now this is the uncertainty. Then, Come to human life. We are called Manusya. Animals are called Tirachina in the Buddha's language, Mali language. Tirachina means living beings who walk in this way. Cats and dogs, they walk in this way. Their head is like this, isn't it? So they are called Tiranji. We are called Manusha. Manusha, Mana. Mana means mind. Only living beings who can develop the mind. And that living being is called Manusha. There is no any other living beings who can develop further and further and further intelligence through their education or through their intelligence by thinking, analyzing, investigating. They can develop and develop and develop. See how many things they have discovered. It is scientists, psychologists, philosophers, great thinkers, religious teachers, by using their intelligence. No any other living beings who can do this. Therefore we are very fortunate. We can develop if we work hard. Then we know what to do with this life. Once what is the purpose? Purpose is to see the end of all our sufferings. Now that is the purpose. Wherever we remain, still there are sufferings. Still there are unsatisfactory. 
unhappiness. So, then we get fed up with our life. Some people want to commit suicide because of that unsatisfactory. But when we develop this mind, we know how to gain that satisfaction. Physically and mentally, every minute we experience some sort of problems with our life, our physical body, pain, ache, that is due to imbalance or disagreement, clashes, elements and energies in our body. Sicknesses, old age, weaknesses, all these things take place because of these elements and energies. When there is no harmony among these elements and energies in our body and in our mind. Whether we are young or old makes no difference. Pain, problems, difficulties, we have to face. When two old men meet each other, what do they talk? This is very careful what they talk. <laughs> One man talk about his diabetes, the other man talk about his heart trouble, the other man talk about the high blood pressure, the other man talk about gastric ulcer, and the other man talk about cancer, other, another person talk about tumor, all sort of complaint, nothing but complaint in their talk. Listen very carefully. You can record, you know, when two old men get together, they are what they talk. Now this is the nature of life. So, existence with this physical body in any part of the universe create troubles, problems, pains, difficulties. So liberation, salvation, freedom from the religious point of view is free from all these conflicts. Even one minute we are not free from these problems. So when we attain the higher stage of sainthood, uh, then we will be free. No complaint, no worries, no disturbances, no fighting, no crying. Then we are free. Then we really enjoy our life. Now we are not enjoying, we are struggling. We are struggling for our survival, for our living. We work very hard to enjoy life. While working to enjoy, we kick the bucket. Arm way. No chance to enjoy life. Uh, this is the nature of life. So human life, among these 31 planes of existence, living being, human life is the highest. I can tell you. Why only a human being can become a Buddha? Nobody else. A God cannot become a Buddha. Devas cannot become a Buddha. That intelligence is not there. Human intelligence is higher than all the other living beings. We are thinking. That mental development can be done only by human beings. And there are no human beings in any other part of the universe. This is the only place, only planet where human beings exist. The Buddhas never exist in any other part of the universe. Only in this world. 
Human beings can understand the meaning of life. Others do not know. Others do not know anything about their life. As I mentioned just now, as humans we can prepare for our next life, not to become miserable. But others do not know how to do that. All right. Now let us come to Devalok, heavens. There are six. So when they come and ask you to join with them to go to heaven, you can say, you have only one heaven, but we have six. <laughs> and we can choose one of them, but you have no choice. <laughs> you do not know that. <laughs> we, can, we can choose which heaven that we like to enjoy our life. There are names also given. Jatum Maharajika Tavatinsa Yama Tusita Nimmanrati Paranimita was one. Six. And the life span, duration of existence of their life. Fifty years here in this world. One day to the lowest heaven, they will know. This is true. Twenty-eight days here in this world, one day to the moon. You know that, is it? Only one day. <laughs> so, lowest heaven, they will occur. They exist 500 years according to their calculation. 500 multiplied by 50, how much? How much? Your arithmetic is very weak. <laughs> 500 multiplied by 50, how much? 25,000. They can exist 25,000 years. Lowers have. Enough. And <clears throat> there is no old age. There is no childbirth. So ladies are free from that problem. Yes, they do not give birth like humans and animals. But they adapt these newcomers as their children. They are not children. They do exist as they appear. No holy. How many is <laughs> No holy. And they have everything very comfortable. Enjoyable life. <clears throat> then how do they get this very fortunate, comfortable, prosperous life? How do they get it? Can you tell me? Now if you want to go to heaven, is there anything that you have to do? <clears throat> Simply by praying and worshipping you cannot go to heaven. These are accumulated good deeds that they have done. <coughs> that is one thing. That, that is not enough. Definitely we must have good karma. But these good karmas are not enough. We must have some other forces. Uh, here the Buddha says, Satchan bhane nakudjaya dadja appas vimpi ajito. Three things are there. Besides these good karmas, there are three good qualities you have to cultivate. If you want to go to heaven, first thing, 
Chang Bhangi, tell the truth. Nothing but truth. Can you do that? Ah, uh, here, now we can see a little bit difficult. Tell the truth. <coughs> Second one, Nakut Jai. Don't show your anger to disturb others. Anger is there. We cannot wipe out at once. But don't use this anger to disturb others. Now, this is the second good quality. Third one, <coughs> don't be stingy. Don't be selfish. You have to give something, contribute something for the benefit of others, to release their suffering. If you can cultivate these three things with all the other, the other good karma, then rebirth take place in one of these and they will live. Again, the difference between Buddhism and other <coughs> Other religions say the heavenly life is eternal, everlasting, permanent, never change. Buddhism says no. There is no such place. Can spend millions of millions of years, even then. There will be an end to that life. Only the Buddha who is covered. But all the others believe it is everlasting. No change. Now the problem is this. These devas, they go on enjoying, enjoying day and night by spending all their good merit. When they are good married, extinguished, exhausted, no more, their life disappeared, just like the flame, this candle flame disappeared. When the flame disappeared, there is nothing to remain. When their body disappeared, after their death, there are no corpse or no dead body. This is the nature of Deva. They appear, they exist, they enjoy. When there are no more good karmas to support this, during their enjoyment, let's say 25,000 years, they enjoy. They have never done any meritorious thing. They never think of a religious way of life because they have no proper religion. And this is the day. That is why human beings are fortunate. Although we suffer, we think of a religion. We think of our next life and we prepare for it. Devas go on enjoying, enjoying, enjoying. And here in this world also there are some human being who have more than enough money and property and so many things and they have no time to think of religion, very busy. All the while counting money and busy. <laughs> and suddenly die, nobody knows what happened to them. No time to think of religion. Just like those devas. But poor people, the more they suffer, the more they think of religion because they prepare not to suffer in the next So, devas have no chance, no opportunities, no facilities for them to do meritorious deeds while enjoying. Then rebirth take place again, but they do not know where, whether as human beings or animals or any other forms of life after enjoying such a long period. 
Now this is the uncertainty of their life. Therefore the Buddha says, don't satisfy after gaining that heavenly bliss in heaven, don't satisfy thinking this is our final birth and this is enough for us. You have to go beyond that further. Six stages where they experience their worldly life in different ways. Now there is another thing. <coughs> These devas have some worldly powers that we have not. And they can use these worldly powers to protect others, to support us. The Buddha teach this. He says, when we do some meritorious deeds, religious work, Invite these devas to come and share our happiness. Then the devas will be happy. When they come to know that we remember them, we invite them to share the happiness of the marriage. So in return, these devas keep an eye on these people who remember them so that they get the chance to escape from certain misfortune, accidents and troubles and disturbances. So the devas can protect. This is the only thing these devas can do. They cannot give us knowledge. They cannot give us wisdom. They cannot give us salvation. They cannot send us to heaven or nirvana. Impossible but they can do certain worldly help in our day-to-day -day life for our protection. That is why the Buddhists always remember and invite the devas to share. So we say, Akasattha Jagumvatha Deva Naga Mahitrika Vinyantam Anumoditva Chirang rakham to loka sadha. Here, these are the words that we recite. Meaning, I invite all the devas to share the merit or the happiness of these meritorious deeds. And after receiving our merit, may they protect all of us and this world. Because they have such worldly power. But salvation or liberation or heavenly bliss or demonic bliss, they cannot give. We have to prepare. Now let us come to Brahma world. There are sixteen Brahma world. Six Devaloka or heavens and sixteen Brahma world. Brahma world is higher than Devaloka. And their existence, the durations or lifespan also higher than Deva. Some of them can exist for one world cycle. Don't know how many millions or millions or trillions of years. But the Buddha says utter waste it. Because there will be an end even to that Brahma world, that life. And what is the nature of their life? Those who have developed their meditation. Those who have disciplined and trained their mind, those who have trained their senses, five senses, without becoming slaves to their senses, through their meditation, 
after they are dead, rebirth takes place. That means higher than human, human in worry sense. Higher than human, not intellectually, but worldly sense. They are higher than humans. They are higher than devas. Why? Right? They are fortunate. They always experience peace, calmness, satisfaction, happiness. Why? They are not crazy for sensual pleasure. Here in this world, where human beings and animals exist, all their problems, and troubles, and violence, and bloodshed, and war, killing each other because of the sensual pleasure. Why animals, cats and dogs, fight and bite each other because of sensual pleasure? Why human beings kill each other, create violence and bloodshed and disturbances because of sensual pleasure. If the senses are under control, they behave as cultured human beings, very noble human beings. So those Brahmas, just because they have trained and disciplined and cultured their mind through their meditation, they lead very peaceful life. No worries in their mind. No disturbances in their mind. They have no grudge or jealousy in their mind. They have satisfaction. Three senses are very calm, not active. They don't want to use the smell, taste, and feeling. Not interesting. They don't take solid food just like us. For so they are living solid food like rice and bread and all these things, not necessary. They don't like to have a nice meal, fragrance, not necessary. They don't like to have nice feeling. They use only two senses, eyes and ear, for their living. That is why they can lead a very peaceful life. When people meditate, as human beings, by controlling their senses, they also experience. And they reduce their crazy attitude toward pressure or sex or these things. That tension, that uh, anxiety is reduced. Because that creates a lot of worries and disturbances to meditation. So the Brahmas experience full satisfaction, calmness, relax. We have no chance to relax. But they cannot carry on forever. Now that is the problem. Until the Buddha appeared in India, people never knew this. There were so many Indian religions at that time, 2,500 years ago. In every Indian religion, the followers believe that Brahma world is the final goal, eternal, everlasting life. The Buddha said, no, you have to go beyond that further. Because those Brahmas have not completely purified their mind. 
they have suppressed, they have controlled, they have reduced so many evil forces from them. But uh, still remain the root of craving for existence and little bit of anger, emotion and little bit of ignorance, illusion, are still remain. That is why rebirth takes place again. If these evil forces are no more in that mind, rebirth never takes place again. And then the Buddha pointed out. They had to eradicate, purify their mind completely. And then it, they can experience eternal bliss. That is not heaven, that is not Brahma world, it is Nirvana. Nirvana is not a place. Nirvana is the bliss that we experience by eradicating all our mental impurities or evil thoughts. The peace and happiness that we experience in Nibbana is like this. I give you an example. Supposing you have a very painful gastric ulcer, very painful. Every day you suffer. After taking certain precautions and medicines, completely got cured. No more gastric ulcer and no more pain. And you are very normal. Then, either doctor or somebody asked that person, how do you feel now? He said, I feel very nice. Can you tell me what is that nice, the word, meaning of nice there? Can you tell me what it is? He said, yes, I feel very nice. What is that nice? Can you tell me? Nothing nice. No, exactly, nothing nice. Very nice. What is that? Think for a while. Eh? Not the correct answer. Eh? That's right. That is the correct answer. <laughs> no more pain. Nice means no more pain. Otherwise, there is nothing to show. This is nice. Nirvana is like this. So Nirvana is not a place to point out that is Nirvana. What we experience, oh, it is very nice, just like that. Got cured, complete, no more pain, no more physical pain, no more mental disturbances, and then very nice. That is called Nirvana. But this Nirvanic bliss we cannot gain simply by worshipping or praying or what you call uh, experiencing heavenly bliss or Brahma world, no. still remain within these thirty-one planes of existence, wheel of existence. That is called repeated birth and death, birth and death, birth and death. That is what we are doing. Now in Brahma world there are two more. This, you, you may not believe it because you cannot understand. Because there are many things that we cannot understand. We should not think that we can understand everything. In certain Brahma world, body exists without mind. 
just like like a rock. Do you think it is possible? Body exists, but there is no mind. Now this is the nature of this rock. Who are these people? During their previous birth, they develop that particular meditation to control the mind. Mind controlling meditation. So they have stopped their feeling, sensation completely. But mental energy remains there. Mental energy is not functioning. After they are dead, rebirth takes place in this particular Brahma world. Physical body remains, but no feeling, no pain, nothing. It is a life. Long period. They remain there. The Buddha did not encourage people to practice this kind of meditation, the wasting that life there. Now this is another group, among these thirty-one things. Another group, <coughs> mind exists without a physical body. It is more difficult to understand. Mind remains but no body. Do you think it is possible? Yes, for you it is impossible, for them it is not impossible. <laughs> because you cannot understand. <coughs> it is not impossible. You have to think in that way. It is not impossible. Why? They have developed their meditation <coughs> to reduce their craving attachment toward this physical world. They concentrate very deeply and analyze this physical body, this ugliness, ugly and dirty and filthy thing in this world. Although we maintain this as most precious thing in this world, it is the most dirty and ugly and filthy, smelly. How many times a day we have to wash and clean? Here you can understand how dirty this body is. So they develop this meditation. They completely get fed up with the physical body. And they have reduced their craving attachment toward the physical body. After they are dead, when rebirth takes place in that particular Brahma realm, life energy because no one can see the light. This is not light, this is body. They the house for that light to exist. We have a wrong idea <laughs> because they will think this is the light. This is the shelter. This is the house for that light to exist. Life is an energy related to mental energy. Mental energy sustain, maintain life process. So, life can exist without physical body when we analyze in this way. Because the mental energy remains there. So that energy, life process, also remain millions of years. Again, there will be an end to it. All the thirty-one planes of existence belong to these groups. So here, now we are spending as human beings. If we abuse this human life without using properly, 
there is no guarantee that after our death, again we can get back this human life. Now this is the answer. If you abuse and misuse this physical human body, in the next birth you become more fortunate to have four legs. Today you have only two. In the next life you can get four legs. That means you abuse the human life. Very difficult to become human beings. In if you do very bad, very cruel, very harmful, dangerous thing, you have no chance even to become an animal. Go beyond that. Worse than animals, like devils, ghosts, or spirits. Or hell. Hell means suffering. Therefore, we must know how to make use of this life. We should not be so greedy, jealous. We should not develop our hatred, anger. We should not create enemies by showing our anger. We harm ourselves. We harm others. That is why we need a religion. Religion teaches us how to make use of this life peaceful. Religion teaches us how to die without fear, without worries, without disturbances, how to die with hope and confidence. Religion teaches us how to prepare our next life after our death. Without religion, all these scientific subjects, whatever worldly subject that you do you, they cannot create this. Only religion. More than an hour. Nine, coming to nine forty. We started about eight, eight twenty or eight. Yes, now <coughs> questions. Now I explain already various forms of existence. So which one do you prefer? Among those thirty one. Okay. Chief Abel, could I ask a question? Yeah. I was not here earlier. I would like you to hang out. If you could please explain the transmigration of soul. Oh. I'm already confused. Then. Yeah, there is nothing to get confusion. This concept of soul is foreign, uh, not agreeable with the Buddha. Now, all the existing religions in this world and all the other religions that existed a few thousand years ago, all can join together when they come to this particular subject, soul. Buddha is the only religious teacher in this world who pointed out that this is only man's imagination. There is no such thing as soul either created by anybody or come into existence automatically. Then he explained, what is soul? Where is it? What it is? Nobody knows. All right. Buddhism says mental energy is responsible for our life. When that mental energy is purified, life becomes fortunate. When that mental energy is polluted, then the life becomes miserable. Now let us take another example. We take three glasses here. Three glasses of water. Then we pour orange juice into one glass. We put cow dung or dog dung into another glass. 
and the other glands remain pure water. Pure mental energy is just like the pure water that remains in the three glasses. When we add orange juice into one glass, we purify the purity of the water. But it is useful, it is drinkable. We say it is nice. So the worldly pleasure that we experience by using, by polluting the purity of the mind is like the orange glass. But you have purified, dirty or the polluted the purity of the water. But useful. Again the other one that you put cow dung or dog dung is a dirty, filthy, you throw away. Uh -huh. You polluted your mind by committing bad, wicked, cruel, immoral things. And that life throw away. That means get into unfortunate state of suffering. Very easy to understand. So the mind is responsible. Why did they create this imagination? Because they have not learned how to analyze the mind. Only in the Buddha's teaching, this method is very clearly pointed out. Forty-five years teaching divided into three groups, Sutra, Vinaya, Abhidhan. Sutra, Pitaka means morals and ethics and examples and parables and stories and advices given by the Buddha for us to lead a religious way of life, simple. That is what we are learning. Vinaya, discipline. What are the precepts? What are the things that we have to do? What are the things that we should not do? How to avoid, how to keep away, how to cultivate certain things? Uh, this is called Vinaya, disciplinary court. Another section. Abhidharma, analytical interpretation of mind and matter. What is mind? Analyze. What is matter? Analyze. Are these analysis you cannot find in any other way. Abhidhamma. When you study this particular area, we can understand everything in this universe, how these things appear, how these things change, how these things decay, why these things disappear, after this what will happen to them, how mental energy contributes and supports, how elements come and join, combinations of elements and energies in Abhidha. So. <coughs> The mind, <coughs> there are four mental faculties, not only one faculty. Mind is one, but there are different functions, different duties. Vedana, Sanya, Sankara, Vinya. These are the four. First thing, Vedana, our feeling. Pleasant, unpleasant. One mental faculty experience. Second one is sanya. Sanya means perception. Perception means we recognize, identify. This is so and so. This is useful. This is dangerous. This is arm. Uh, that recognition is done by this particular mental faculty. Another area. Third one is called Sankara. Sankara means all our mental habits, wholesome, unwholesome, or good or bad, our character, 
our behavior, our nature, our temperament, our attitude, our mood, all these things are there. Natural, by birth, not given by the parents, not given by God, but our own. By nature some people are very cruel from their childhood, but others are very kind. Some others are very cunning. You can see from the very beginning, very cunning. Some others are very innocent. Who gave these things? Nobody. They are all. And some are very generous. From their childhood we can see. And small children I have seen, when they get some sweet, some of them go and share with other children. Some others, I never give to others, no children. And that is their own character. Father or mother never told them to be like this. And some of them are criminal minded. Some are very religious minded. Now, all these things are there in that sankhara. In the modern psychology, it is called collective consciousness. In our subconscious mind, all these mental habits. Then we have our hobbies fishing, shooting, collecting stamps, collecting big stars photos. <laughs> these are our hobbies <laughs> collecting hats, collecting, collecting shoes. <laughs> all those sort of things become our happy. That means what we have done during our previous birth. I remember these sayings of the Buddha. Very easy to remember. We are the result of what we were. We will be the result of what we are. Can you remember? Can you understand this? We are the result of what we were. If our life is Pleasant, peaceful, nice, fortunate, prosperous. This is the result of all the good deeds that we have done during our previous life. If our life is miserable, unfortunate, and enormous troubles and worries and disturbances, this is the result of what we were. All the bad things that we have done during our previous birth, we are experiencing. We will be the result of what we are. Our next life takes place according to our way of life today. What we are doing, either good things or bad things. So, all these things are there in that third mental faculty. When people hypnotize a person, uh, they can dig out so many things, even the previous birth was. And Arahantas, when they tell Satan, they recall, they remember all their previous activities in their subconscious mind. But people never knew these things earlier. Only the Buddha dig out all these things. And the last one is called Vijnana, consciousness. Consciousness means my senses bring object from outside into our mind. Give new information, the smell, the taste, and the vision, and the sound, and the feeling. Give some information to our mind. And mental image, mind itself creates thought and imagination and image. Again, those three mental, four mental faculties, among those four earlier, our feeling, our recognition, our habit. These three mental faculties also contribute to that consciousness. Good karmas, bad karmas, our habit, our nature, our character, all these ingredients are there. So when that consciousness departed from here, transmitted from here, after our death, it is not the soul. People would not understand. 
So when that consciousness departed from here, again combined with the external cosmic energies and element. After that, settle down in the mother's room. Then, you know. So there is no place for soul in Buddhism. 